No role plays, no conference calls, no BS. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, what I want to go over is, you know, you and I had a conversation kind of offline a little bit around the lack of results on some teams and how some teams tend to be high performing, which we kind of defined as um, the the ability to achieve results over a sustained period of time. So if you if a team is is, is sustaining these results over a long period of time, it could be high performing. Any team can get results over a short period of time and they wouldn't be considered necessarily high performing because if you kind of move through your people fast enough, you can kind of rule with an iron fist kind of thing and 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 still get the results short term, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're high performing. And so we were kind of talking about how a team kind of achieves this status, this, this we are a high performing team, meaning we have results, it's sustained over a long period of time. And then consequently, that means that if a team is not achieving this this kind of status of high performing, why not? And, and we wanted to kind of break it down into really easily digestible buckets as to why a team might be um, dysfunctional, for lack of a better word, not a- achieving these these results for a long period of time or not being a high performing team. And, and I think we've kind of broken it down into kind of four manageable topics that I want to go over over the next four episodes here. Um, we're going to talk about trust. We're going to talk about conflict. We're going to talk about commitment. And we're going to talk about accountability. And there might seem some like some overlap between those, um, but I think that they are, are different enough where if you're a leader and you're trying to manage a team and you're trying to become a high-performing team, that you'll start to see where your team is lacking in in one of these or, or more than one of these things um, to be able to kind of dial it in and, and get better at these things. Yeah, I think it's a great topic, and I know we kind of spoke about it, because I think sometimes when, when we talk about these things and, and – Trust, like you can go back and in, in, in search, like we've talked about trust before, we've talked about accountability before, we talked about commitment before, but a lot of times these are things in the context of, you know, uh, team building, leadership, that type of stuff. And right now, I like that we're talking about in the context of high performing teams because there are definitely things that are nuanced and different um, to how you approach this. If you're thinking about building a team over time, if you're thinking about the responsibility of a leader and that you are, they're measuring outcomes as kind of the ultimate measurement of of your people getting better every day and you're considering decisions that you make on this journey and and things that you're looking out for from an observable behavior standpoint and you're thinking about how is my team showing up in these spaces that's what I'm excited about this conversation because I think that um, right now there's a lot of that that's happening there's a lot in a lot of different industries right now where people are talking about this evolution of leadership this new way of leading um, the you know, multiple generations, the new expectations of a workforce. There's just a lot of conversation happening. And um, let's not forget, like, I think that, you know, when you have a job, you have a role, you are a leader, you are by default responsible for producing something, some type of a project, a result, a measurable. And when you hold that responsibility, um, thinking about how you build teams in a positive way to help you get that work done um, and not only you know deliver on what the expectation is, but over deliver and really um, exceed that expectation, I think is is something that's always top of mind for me. And so I'm looking forward to this dialogue. Right. I, I go back to almost 20 years now to the first time I heard the phrase from a leader that we, we both reported to at the time, results equals credibility equals opportunity. And, and so, you know, if you, if you start there, it, it can, it can be tough because, you know, in a lot of organizations, um, and, and I, and I can be guilty of saying the same thing too, saying things like, you know, it's not about the results, it's about the behavior, right? We want to focus on the behavior, not on the results. And, and while I, I think there's some truth to that, it's in the context of that, wh- why are you focusing on the behaviors to begin with, right? Like there's a reason why you want to focus on the behavior. It's not just because you think the behavior is good. It's because you think they will net you a positive result. And and so it's it's not just, it's not about the results, it's about the behavior. It's about the results, but it's also about the behaviors. Meaning you can't just say, hey, we got the results 
forget how we got there. Don't look at how we got there. Just look at the fact that we look good on this Excel spreadsheet, right? That's not good. But if you if you are properly aligned as an organization and as a, as a team from a standpoint of what behaviors net you the results in aggregate over a long period of time, and, and those behaviors are properly defined, what that what that phrase, it's not about the results, it's about the behaviors means is that we as a leadership team believe that if you consistently do these behaviors day in and day out over and over and over again, the results will get there. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the results. It means that if, if, a, if you're a leader and you don't look at the behaviors at all, you don't focus on the behaviors at all. You don't uh, watch what your people are doing and then come review time. Let's talk about your results. That's terrible leadership, right? It, 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 you can't start with the results. You have to start with the behavior. But the whole reason you've determined these are the correct behaviors is because you want a specific result. And so when we talk about these these kind of four buckets over the, over the next four weeks here, I, I want you keep that in the top of your mind is that the, the idea is to get the result that you're looking for, not to get the behavior you're looking for. It, it's these are the reasons why you might not be getting those behaviors and therefore not getting those results. Yeah, I think, again, in context, we're talking about high performing teams. Right. Right, like like performance. And so like whatever that is for you, whatever that is for your industry, whatever that is for your teams, you know, high performing team means that you are consistently producing whatever the result is um, on a project, on a, a creative art, on on a, on a year over year growth metric, um, on the ability to uh, to merchandise, doesn't matter. Like whatever the thing is that's being measured or that's being kind of observed, being assessed, whatever that thing is, uh, to be a high performing team means that you're continuing to deliver on that thing over and over and over again consistently and typically uh, above and beyond the peers that are also responsible uh, for similar types of work. Right, right. And, and the reason why we put it in the context of, you know, results equals credibility. The reason why results equals credibility is because if you have the results that are being looked for by the, your, the broader organization, you typically have the credibility to then say, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing here. If a, if your boss comes in and is telling you how to do things, it typically means the results aren't already there and they're, and they're trying to figure out why the results aren't there. If your results are there and you're getting there consistently over time, I, I find it very difficult to believe that, that a person leading a team like that is also being micromanaged in order to get something better. But like th those are the teams that get left alone. And, and so if you have the results, you'll have the credibility to kind of continue to continue to do that. Yeah. And I think, too, for me, the credibility is amongst kind of the peer group. So, like, when I think about credibility, I think of people that I know that have consistently delivered on their results and have led amazing teams and um, have produced not only outcomes, but great talent and pipeline. So when they talk, I listen. Right. When, when they when they when they provide an element of of, of uh, whether it's, you know, just uh, observation or an idea or they, they challenge something or they debate, I, I shut up and I listen because they, they clearly to me have credibility in the fact that they've been able to do this for a very, very long time. And that, that doesn't mean that I just go do what they say. That doesn't mean that exactly what they explained is what I'm going to go do, but I am going to take note. I am going to consider it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to, I'm going to play it out in my own mind and I'm going to ask some questions, uh, so, you know, to, to better understand maybe how they got there or why that was a the decision they made. Uh, but, but I, that's how I look at the credibility piece is like, I'm, you know, as, as someone that I think I feel like I'm constantly learning and looking for places to learn. I want to learn from credible sources. <laughs> I, want to, I want to learn from people that have done it. I'm, I'm going to learn from those that maybe don't have the results yet. Maybe maybe they're still figuring things out. Maybe they've maybe they've felt they've fallen on their face a few times and they've learned those lessons. Like I'm going to learn from from those leaders as well. But I'm really focused in 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 you know. Um, considering the words and the, the the wisdom coming from those that have had a good amount of time to show and prove in the work that they're responsible for. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, so the, the very first bucket that I want to talk about here, if you are if you are trying to lead a high performing team and it's not working out for you, um, if you're not getting the results consistently over time, one of the things that could be lacking in your team is trust. 
And, you know, we've talked about this in, in several different contexts. We've talked about uh, psychological safety. Uh, we've talked about, um, you know, team members giving feedback to each other, um, helping each other. We've talked about, um, you know, people being kind of allowed to kind of get away with things because they have other things. Oh, that person's really good at this. So we let them be a jerk because without them, we wouldn't have this result. We, you know, there's all of these things contribute to a, a lack of trust on a team. And, and oftentimes, if you don't have a high performing team, it's because you lack trust between the team members which leads to people kind of focusing on their own individual results as opposed to team results. Yeah, and again, I we've spoken at length around things like trust. And I think one of the things that we maybe, we, we talk about these in some of our one-minute hacks and everything, but like, w- how do you do it? Like, like, I think that there are people, right, and, and leaders that have a general um, way about them where because of the way they connect with their people, because of the way they, they hold themselves, you know, uh, to a certain degree of accountability, because of the way they, they, they walk the walk and not just talk the talk, that they earn trust um, in, in those types of ways. And because of that, a lot of times their teams will emulate those behaviors and they'll feel like there's an element of trust for the leader, which then kind of like goes on to say there's a level of trust for the team. But, but what I always think about is places where you can actually do the work. So when we say like creating a safe environment to speak up, what does that actually look like? And and, not, and and again, like what are you actually doing? How are you how are you creating spaces in in big meetings where you've got multiple people where you're making sure that there are people there that are willing to speak up and share what they're thinking, where, where you allow there to be space where people can have disagreement and specifically disagreement with you and that that be okay, that, that you actually appreciate that, that you recognize that. That doesn't mean that what they're saying is the right thing or what you're going to end up doing, but the simple fact that they're willing to say it and that you want to create a safe environment to speak up, you have to know that, that what you're going to do in those moments is absolutely critical to establishing the trust of a team. Same thing with like, you know, leveraging strengths for a team and team members helping each other. Like, what does that actually look like? How how do you set up a space where team members can help each other? What's the way that you do that in a positive way? What's the way that you do that where you recognize the fact when team members do that for each other that you make a big deal out of it? And you talk about how important that is to your team and how you really appreciate that and you respect that, that somebody took the time to, to pivot what they were responsible for, to help somebody else make sure that they also got it. Like these are those things that, again, I think a lot of leaders um, have this natural intuition because of the experiences they've had, maybe mentors, things that people have done for them. But but are you thinking about it in a way to say, what happens if I get in the meeting today and I share something and somebody says, I don't agree with that? Like, what's my response going to be besides the emotional hit, the ego hit, the feeling called out in public, all the things that may run through your body in the moment is the first thing you're going to say to say, you know what? First of all, let me say thank you. Thank you for speaking up. Thank you for saying you don't agree with me. We're going to talk about my position, your position, what makes sense here to work all this out. But I want everybody in this room to know that I really appreciate that you that you felt the safe environment to be able to speak up and and think that I'm wrong or, or push back on an idea that I have. I, I honestly and genuinely appreciate that because we can't get better together unless we're all willing to do that for one another. And I'm no exception. So like, have you thought about what you're going to say? Have you, have you written it down? Have you considered it? That's such a critical point when you're talking about building real trust with the team. Right, right. You think about where this is lacking. Um, you know, you, there's a, there's a lot of memes online right now around people talking about how, oh, I just survived another meeting that should have been an email, or the hybrid or remote work environments are kind of evolving even more into people saying, I don't want to have me- like meeting times that that I, I feel like I'm pulled out of my work in order to be part of a meeting. You know, the, all these like, we're trying to cut down on the number of meetings that we have. It's like, if, if you're part of a team, and that's the mindset of everybody on the team. If you have people who are saying, I, I, I dread going to these meetings, I don't like these Zoom calls, whatever it is, it's not the meeting they dread, it's other things. Like you can't, it's, it's not like, oh, they don't wanna be on camera. No, no, it's not, I, I don't wanna be pulled off the beach when I don't want to work at all and and you want me to work and I don't like working, so I don't want to be a part of this meeting. That's not what is being dreaded. What's being dreaded is is the time suck 
that happens when a person believes that what they're being held accountable to is their individual results and they no longer believe that their team members can help them achieve those results. They no longer believe that there are team members who can help them get there. They no longer believe there are team members that are worth their help in getting there. They no longer believe they're going to learn anything or gain anything from that meeting. It's not the meeting itself. So, so don't, don't, you know, tell yourself that it's about, you know, people not wanting to be there. It's that they don't see any value in it anymore. And, and so the, the way to kind of turn that around is not to force people to go to meetings. It's to make sure that there is this desire to go to them because of what they get out of them is so profound. And, and so the, these are the kind of things that, that, that you as a leader need to to do in order to turn it around. And it's done outside of the meeting. It, it, when we talk about team members helping each other, you don't set up the meeting in order to get people together to say, now we're going to help each other. You set up individual, uh, you know, scenarios or events where two people can help each other or, or, or benefit from each other. You, you talk to people about what their strengths are. And when we say strengths, not what are they, what are they into? It's what are their actual strengths? And, and, and you utilize those strengths in helping do something. And then you tell them that, hey, the next time we're meeting together, you're going to present to the team on what you were able to get done. Like there's a lot that you can do here as a leader in order to create the environment that allows people to say, you know what? I want to get together with my team now. We need to be together so we can kind of level set and go over this. Maybe not every day, but but more often than we're doing because I think it's, you know, just a time suck right now. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's one minute hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. All right. For this episode's one minute hack, here's what I want you to do. As a leader of a team, if you're trying to build trust to be able to become a high performing team, there are two things you need to focus on. One is intentionally setting up environments where challenges can occur and debate can occur uh, you know, amongst your team and intentionally setting up times and spaces for team members to leverage strengths in order to help each other. Um, the first one can be uh, just as simple as an employee comes to you privately to kind of challenge you on something and saying, hey, you know what? I, I like where you're going with that. Can you can you put that on hold for a minute and bring it up in the meeting that we're gonna have when we're all together as a team? I'm gonna I'm gonna present the way I want to present, and then I I like that kind of other take on it or other way of doing things. Bring that up in front of the group. Don't just tell me personally. I want the group to hear this because I I want there to be this kind of culture of when we have a, an issue we can bring it up. We don't have to wait until we're private one on one in a high performing team in a healthy team people can bring up things you know, on the fly when the group is together. Um, and then setting up time and space for team members to leverage strengths to help each other, that could be you know, people who are peers to each other. You look at where someone is strong at something, you pair them with somebody who's not as strong at something, and you get them to work together. And then you ask them to talk about how that went when you're amongst the group together. Um, th- this is what you do in order to build trust from, from square one. Um, if your team is lacking trust, you don't build trust by just demonstrating that you're a trustworthy person as a leader, that's important, but it has to be a a team that trusts each other, not just trust you as a leader. Um, This is the way to do it. Spaces where they can leverage strengths to help each other and spaces where they can challenge each other and and not have any fear of reprisal. Yeah, I think it's a great woman to hack. And and I love what you said there, which is like, look, you can have you can have a trusting leader. And and there have been times when I've when I've had leaders in my life from like, yeah, very very, like I, I, I believe strongly in their values. I trust them. I think they have the best of intent. I think that they really want this to be successful. Uh, but, but there's not much intent in the creating the spaces to allow these things to exist as a culture. And, and so you end up having these elements where, again, if you're thinking about high performing teams, to me, one of the biggest tells of a high performing team is when you have a change in leadership. Whether it's the main leader that goes on to something else or multiple leaders on the team go on, get promoted, move on, that type of thing. And the performance continues to maintain. Uh, what that tells me and shows me is that, that those spaces have been created, that culture and that environment has been created where the team and the individuals on the team understand that this is about them doing uh, the best of their potential, the the pride they have in what they deliver together, the behaviors and culture of learning, of debates, of 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 you know, uh, kind of commitment to the cause. Like all these things are alive and well in that team, regardless of a change in leadership um, at any one of the levels. And so I think that you know, 
the 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 idea of making sure that you're intentional in creating spaces that you're prepared that you say if if I want to have a team that is that that is psychologically safe to have a healthy debate and is okay disagreeing but there's 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 trust built there if I want to build that in my team I have to be prepared mentally and what am I going to say what am I going to do when these things pop up when 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 those leaders for the first time you know, are in a meeting and somebody, you can see them rolling up their paper and their faces getting red because you can just tell like they, they do not agree with somebody else's opinion of a strategy. And then you call that out and then they say that. And then you, then you, what are you going to say? How are you going to make sure that people understand? Like that's, you know, we, we want that dialogue. We want that, um, you know, that, that feeling of a culture that, that sees the world that way. So I don't know. I just think that that's a, it's such a great um, a reminder uh, of, of the space that we need to do to prepare ourselves as leaders um, for those opportunities. Right, right. Th- this is going to be a great series over the, over the next few weeks here. So so join us for all of them. Um, and, you know, we love feedback on, on what we're doing too. You know, we often will, um, you know, you kind of construct these episodes around the feedback that we get um, throughout. And so if there's a part of this episode that you want to hear more about, reach out to us on Instagram or on LinkedIn and tell us about that, and we'll dive in more deep on you know an upcoming Thoughtful Thursday or or other episodes throughout the week, um, because uh, you know we we, we want to make sure that if there's something that you didn't understand or that you you know kind of want to hear more about, um, that uh, we can kind of cater that. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a great series, and I'm looking forward to to more dialogue about it. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm Chris, and we'll talk to you all next time.